and welcome to Impacto. I'm your host, Gabriela Santos, president of a and Career Consulting Foundation Incorporated, which is a non-for-profit organization registered and operating out of the state of New York. a and Career Consulting is focused on offering career consultation services to underserved communities. Some of our services include resume building, interview prepping, uh, identifying your career path, and so much more. For more information, you may visit us at amcareerconsulting.org, or you can email us at info at amcareerconsulting.org. So welcome everyone. This is our first podcast ever for Impacto. I have a very special guest with us today. Her name is Patty Belgrave. She's a wonderful uh, friend of mine, very dear to me. And she has um, honored us to, to be a part of this very first podcast um, where we highlight Latino success. She is the uh, founder and CEO of Tag Team Cleaning. Um, welcome, Patty. It's a Thank pleasure you. to have Thank you. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So tell us, um, Patty, how what inspired you to, to start your own business? Um, what inspired me to start my business? So I've been an entrepreneur since I was a little girl. I used to sell my toys. I used to sell cupcakes, popcorn at the bingos at people's apartments and all of that. Anything I can get a ha my hands on, I used to try to sell. And um, I used to live in a very underserved community where there's a lot of crime. So my inspiration came from trying to better myself. I wanted to get out of that situation. And um, I always dreamt of just having, being my own boss. I, I ended up in corporate for a little while, but I dabbled into different little business opportunities from Avon up to even selling vacuum cleaners. And in 2007, I, I was married. I had two kids. My house was a mess and I was very stressed out because I didn't have time to clean my house. And I started looking through the yellow pages um, to find a maid service so they can come and clean my house. And since I was an entrepreneur at heart, once I started making those calls and asking for pricing, I was like, hmm, this is something Let's I can go. do. <laughs> I guess this is something I can do. And I had tried so many other things, but I would start something and then I would quit. But this was something that stuck. I ended up uh, doing a little, a little bit of research. I put up my first ad on Craigslist. And it took off from there. I, I started cleaning houses part-time at night and it just, it went from there. So what inspired me was just the wanting better from where I came from. That's awesome. That's great. So that, you know, that's where you got your concept pretty much. You saw an yeah. opportunity and you were like, you know, this sounds like, like a good business. Yeah. A, yeah. You know, I can make money with this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's so awesome. That is so, what are some of the challenges um, that you've faced um, since uh, you've decided to, to become a business owner? Um, there's so many challenges. Once mm -hmm. I started to take this really serious, not like my other little business ventures where I would start and quit and start something else and quit. Mm -hmm. This was something that I, I saw a big potential it was a lucrative um, business idea, so, but a lot of challenges. Uh, first of all, at the beginning, I was doing it all by myself, and um, I didn't have anybody in my background with business, you know, experience, so I'm starting from scratch. I'm learning everything. I, I started off by doing this under the table, not knowing how to legal lies my business and that that came little by little by me finding out through somebody else you know you're supposed to do this and register and insurance and all of that um so that took a that was a, it took me a a little bit longer than say somebody who knew business um right. to learn the the ropes um i got in trouble 
illegally for a couple of things because I didn't have certain um, systems in place that I was supposed to have. And then after that, after I had all of that set up, my biggest issue after that was hiring. It was Mm. finding good quality employees Um, in the industry that I am in, which is the cleaning service industry. There's a big turnaround of employees. Um, There's a, a, a lot of other companies and the franchises go through employees in and out, in and out, in and out. It's not good because you get bad reviews and people don't stay long and they're there just for a paycheck. And, and it took me to hire a mentor and do a lot of self um, investing in myself, reading and all of that to learn how to become an expert in hiring good quality people. So that was my, one of my biggest challenges is finding people as I was growing, I couldn't do the work by myself. So I needed to hire. And the first batch of employees was very toxic. But then my second batch of employees was, I have an amazing team right now because I learned how to do that. And then my second challenge has been um, just building a system, a process, like a funnel. Right. From start to from the moment a client calls to the end result of getting their cleaning done and even the follow-up after that, that took, that took a while to learn. And now those systems are in place, but without those systems, the challenges created a lot of stress, sleepless nights, a lot of tears, a lot of times that I wanted to quit, to be honest. I can, I can imagine. It's like with anything, um, if there's no, even with children, if, if there's no discipline, if there's no, um, you know, if there isn't a system in place, a routine, um, then it's, it's a recipe for, for failure, for sure. That's, that's awesome. And, and it's one of those things, you know, like you said, you, you had to learn as you were going. Um, yeah. And it happens all the time. Um, it's you know, hands when, on. <laughs> it's hands on. Trial, trial and error. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yes. What would you say is um, your company's mission statement? My company's mission statement is to be a top quality residential cleaning service to be trustworthy, attentive, and giving, which is our initials, TAG, T-A-G. Um, trustworthy means that we're sending top quality people that, have, that are full of love and integrity. Attentive means that from the moment the customer calls to the, um, the completion of their cleaning service and even after, uh, we're very attentive to every detail. And giving is our promise that we will be a company that gives back to the community. That's awesome. I love it. I didn't even know that. And I'm your friend. <laughs> yeah. That's so awesome. I love it. And I can, I can attest, um, you know, I'm not being biased. Um, you know, we're amigas. And aside from that, um, I know that you're very, you embody what your mission statement's about. And it's it's just amazing and that's why I decided to invite you <laughs> not just because we're friends but because you're you're just you know very inspiring and I always tell you that you know it's like mm-hmm. it's so great to to see um, Latinos um, succeeding and and you know setting a, a, a blueprint you know and kudos to you. <laughs> Oh, you're welcome. So tell us, um, I know we know by now that it's a cleaning company. Tell us about some of your services. So we offer a couple of different packages. When a customer calls um, for the very first time, we've never been in their house we, and they want us to clean for them. We offer two different deep cleaning packages. We offer like a level one, which is called our general Uh, deep cleaning, which is, it it focuses on kind of like the general, more basic parts Mm -hmm. of cleaning, which is dusting the floors, the bathrooms, and the kitchen countertops. And Mm then um, we, that's just the affordable package because Mm -hmm. we allow our customers to have um, flexibility in that based on their budget. And then if they want to go like the full kind of spring cleaning route, they can upgrade to the level two, which is called our deluxe deep cleaning where where we would do a very deep cleaning. We would even do like hand washing the moldings, the baseboards, the doors, the light switch cover plates, you know, ceiling fans, cabinet, kitchen cabinets, 
um, all those sort of things. There's also a third package for landlords or realtors. Um, if they wanted us to come in and do a move in or move out deep cleaning where the home is empty, then we will go in again and hand wash everything in the house, the molding, the floors, the, the you know, the closets, uh, cabinets inside and out and get the home ready for that new tenant or new homeowner to come in. So, and then after that, if our clients decides they want to stay on board with us on a weekly, bi-weekly or monthly basis, uh, which is our goal, yes. um, then we have very affordable rates for them to stay on with us um, going forward. And those are just basic maintain, maintaining what we did the first time we were there. Wow, that's awesome. That yeah. is awesome. What would you say, um, what sets your company apart from, from other cleaning companies out there? Um, I think there's two things that set us apart. Um, number one is what I talked about before, our employee turnaround. We don't have a lot of employee turnaround. We've been able to... Um, create a, a system of, of, of pay rate, like a performance pay, where our employees are getting paid top dollar. They don't get paid minimum wage like other companies do. Um, they get paid like a kind of like a, a huge, pretty big salary. Um, so because they're worth it. Um, mm, yeah, and then we, yeah, we also have a very intricate process of hiring where I personally hand select the 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 employees myself i have a process of interview questions that i do we screen our employees and then they stay on board with me on training for a couple of months and what i'm looking for before that 90 day mark uh probational mark yeah. is is not how well they clean but how much integrity how much love their personality their character so right being able to bring those type of people into our company sets us apart because um, when a customer experiences our employees, not so it's not so much the cleaning itself, but just the love and the professionalism that my employees bring, it sets us apart. It's like they they people who've done business with other cleaning services are like, oh my gosh, like you guys are so different. They're so professional. There's you know from their uniform to the how they speak to right. how they exit everything is it's trained and professional and full of love and integrity so um and then the second thing is that we have that process where we facilitate everything for the customer from the moment they put in a request through our website how we answer how it's easy for them to accept the work order electronically get their invoice pay their invoice um they receive a text before we get there we they receive a text when we're done and we follow up after the cleaning. Wow, so. that's awesome. It just, it, it, it sounds like it, it flows and, you know, it's just like a wonderful thing because when, when your systems are not in place, it definitely shows. <laughs> that's, that's, and, uh, and that's it's, a, it's a step by step. So it's like, um, I train my office assistant how to do her part. I train my, my, field technicians, the people who are cleaning right. who do their part. So it's right. all, it all combines. And then, you know, then we have the exit process, which is follow up. How did we do in the cleaning? Did we do something wrong? Can we come back and fix it? Um, so it's, it's, it sets us apart because not everybody, like a lot of cleaning companies, you go and get a cleaning from them. You don't hear from them afterwards. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. And it's that feedback that you want, that you want to because there's always room for improvement yeah, um absolutely. and even and even when you know things are going great it, it it's it's a good feeling to to be reassured that you're actually delivering um you know what you set out to deliver so that's yeah. that's awesome and, I, and, and what, go ahead i'm sorry i was gonna say and and the process um of of following up without being afraid of that feedback because we're not perfect we make mistakes um, the, the, you know, we, we've been able to keep good reviews because we catch unsatisfied customers before right. they go on the, on a yeah. rampant of, of, yeah. you know, reviews everywhere. We kind of just catch them and be like, oh my gosh, did we miss the refrigerator? I, I'm sending somebody right back, you know? 
So that's awesome. And that's key because once those reviews are out there, man, that's a tough one. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's hard. Um, you know, once it's there, it's out in the um, cyber world. Yeah. <laughs> and you can't really take it back. Can't, you can't delete them. <laughs> no, not at all. So with COVID, mm -hmm. tell us about, you know, your struggles, because we've all been there. You know, this is a worldwide thing. Obviously, we all know that. Um, what, what have been uh, some of the struggles, the readjusting uh, with all of this COVID-19 business? So COVID hit us really, really hard. It was um, a Most of and a half to, to the business. Um, it's funny because I started the business in 2007 and 2008, I think the market crashed and that, that's when everything happened back then. And, and we were able to strive, but this time it was just a different kind of punch. Mm -hmm. um, we had, right before COVID, we had ended our year doubling our sales for the past, the year before. So we were so excited. We have, we have spent so much money on marketing and we have done so many changes and created all these processes. Mm -hmm. And then COVID hit and around March, we, we, we were faced with having to close or we thought we had to close. And um, not only that, a lot of our customers, obviously, I was too, I was really afraid of COVID. We didn't know what it was. It was killing people everywhere. The news was showing body bags and all of this. And, and we started getting all of our, our regular customers that were like our bread and butter. They, they started canceling all of their services. And they were like, we'll come back when it's safe. So we lost tons of business. Plus, we didn't have new business coming in the door. Plus, they were telling us we needed to shut down. But then... Right when I was ready to shut my doors, um, they deemed us an essential business, right? Um, because we were a cleaning service. They were like, nope, you're one of the ones that you don't have to close your doors. We need you. Right. Like, okay, how do I pivot? How do I, how do I change this around so I don't lose my business? I've worked so hard. It's been 14 years. Right. So what I, the first thing I did was I was, uh, I was big on communicating with my employees, telling them that we're here in this together, that I'm going, that I know that there's no income like it was before, but I had their backs and I did research on unemployment, had them apply for all types of, of stuff. So they had income coming in. I applied for a couple of those loans that helped me um, pay them, kind of help us keep afloat. And then what I right. did, I went personally and I got trained by GBAC, which is the company that um, trained the, the employees of the airport that cleaned the airplanes on, oh. on infectious disease and, and COVID-19. So right. I got a training by them. I, I paid, I, I went through the whole training. I learned about COVID, like I'm still learning. And, yeah. and what I did was I create, the, with everything that I learned, I created a, a risk assessment process, a, um, a new training we call the cleaning for health. I trained all of my employees. Like I had to create it in, in, on a computer because now we're doing everything by yeah, digital remotely. Yeah. Right. And I trained them how to wear their gloves, how to put their PP on, on how, to, how to clean properly so you're cleaning where you're not leaving bacteria Instead, you're, you're removing bacteria. Um, I communicated to my clients and I, in a video and I, and I said, hey, you know, we got you. We, uh, we are here with you. I know this is scary, but we're going right. to make a safe environment when we come to your house. When I'm not sending two people, I'm just going to send one. We're going to stay out of your way. We're going to wear, our P you know, PPE. We're going to sanitize this way. And yeah. um, you're, you're not going to have to worry. So people started coming back. So right now we're still not 100% where we used to be, we're, but we're starting to, to get there. So that's awesome. that yeah, that's, cool. that's how, it, how it was. It, it's been tough. It's, we're still not back to normal, but we're getting yeah, there. I'm we're getting there. And I feel, you know, it's just a learning curve. And, and you stepped right up. And that's what made the difference. You went virtual, <laughs> um, 
you know, because that's where we are. The and it's a great thing. Um, you know, it's it's just readjusting. Um, it doesn't mean it's gonna be easy, um, mm -hmm. but it, it's doable and it's just getting out there and 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 doing it and you're doing yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> that is so awesome. So what you've told us um this question is more like to highlight, but you kind of already told us what, how, like how you've accomplished success. Um, what do you attribute your success to? Uh, more in a, a detail. Yeah, I attribute my success to a very simple thing that I do every single week. I've talked about it on my, on my coach, Patty B. Um, I, I attribute it to doing a brain dump. Mm -hmm. Every Monday, I do what's called a brain dump. This is, I, I, I have one notebook and I keep one notebook around. I don't have right. 10 million different notebooks for everything. I, I don't care if it's my shopping list or my business list. I put it all in one notebook. But every Monday, I brain dump everything that's on my brain that I think I have to do from cleaning a closet in my house. That's personal to right. I have to fix the emails that are being sent out to my customers. I just brain dump everything. And then I have a, a planner. And in my planner, I plan my week out. And I, it, uh, my planners, I, I, I try to find planners that have a to-do list on each day of the week. <clears throat> yes, those are great. So, yeah, so what I do is I plan out my week ahead of time where I'm writing my goals like, um, you know, Monday, I'm going to take out of that brain dump, I'm going to the, you know, I'm going to pick three things that are the most important that if I did them, they're going to push me forward the farthest. Let me get those three things done. Um, if I get more done, great. And then I just, I block out my time. It, it's funny because I, I would hear people say this all the time, take your schedule and block out what you're going to do. I'm like, why do I have to do that? That's stupid. It you know? works. It, it works. works. I block mm -hmm. out, like I'll say eight o'clock, drop off EJ, my son, at school. Mm -hmm. you know, yes. Nine o'clock, coffee me time, because I do my, I'm not a morning person, so I can't get up at five to do it. You know me. <laughs> yes, but, um, I do. <laughs> yeah, nine o'clock is like my me coffee time. I, I relax, I unwind, I listen to a podcast, whatever. And then, and then I block out, you know, this is my tag team cleaning time. And I have other things that I'm part of, like I'm part of other um, networks. So, you know, I'm, I'm blocking this out for my business. I'm blocking out this for my other whatever. Right. Right. And I do my evenings. If I have something to do my evenings, I just write it on there. And, and I keep looking at it. I'm like, okay, it's already 11 o'clock. I'm supposed to be done with my, you know, me time if I went over. Yeah. And, and I, it keeps me in a routine and it keeps and, and the scratching off of those goals is what makes me feel good and then if I go to the next day and I saw that my Monday I didn't get done anything because I slacked off it it, yeah. it pushes me because I'm like crap now I have all this stuff for Tuesday and Monday I need to get on the ball so yes. that that's how I've been able to kind of even double my business and income because I created those that brain dump process. That's awesome. So basically planning, planning, that, planning, planning, planning. And, 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 you know, and just, just sticking to it as best as possible, because like you said, you know, come on, let's face it. Some days were like, oh, you know, because also we need that time to just decompress and and rest. That's a legitimate thing to put down also, <laughs> you know? You me time. And, and you're not, when you are self-employed, yes. you don't have a boss to be accountable to. So your boss is on your back, like, where's my report? And you're like, oh crap, right. you, know, you get it done quickly. But when you are alone, especially now I'm working from home, you don't have right. anything to push you. You have to push yourself. You have to be accountable to yourself. And me with my ADD and, and I slack off a lot. It's like, if I don't do that brain dump, I, the normal me, the natural don't want to do anything. Lazy me will not do anything. 
<laughs> Listen, you're not alone. You are not alone. That that happens quite often. It happens to all of us. Um, but that's an awesome thing to do. Definitely, I can attest to that myself. So yeah. So kudos, kudos. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see here. Um, what would you, what advice would you give to someone starting their own business? Um, I with everything tell, you know thus far, <laughs> you know, I would tell them that a biz with me starting and quitting stuff is like a business. It will not be a business in a day or a week or a couple of months. It's just not, I, I tell, I tell people. If you're going to start a business, don't expect anything, like not a dollar until right. like a year. And only yeah. expect it if you put the work in. Right. Because right. if you didn't put the work in, don't come complaining 12 months from now that this business didn't work. It, it, it wasn't for you. Really, right. truly, you didn't put the work into it. If you put the work into it and you, and you, you know, you do what you're supposed to do. The other thing is um, read, 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 read. Yes, if yes. you're, if you don't like to read, if you don't like to put time into investing into yourself, um, being part of trainings and conventions and stuff like that, if you just don't have the money, you can't find the money, you can't, but you can, you you spend it in other things, right? Right. Um, if you're that type of an excuse kind of person and you don't want to read because I don't like reading, it's not my thing. Mm. I, I'm going to say it. It will show. You will not succeed. You will not succeed. I can, I don't know anybody who's been successful uh, in a business right. where they don't, they don't read not even one article. I read, I, I listen to podcasts. Um, if I'm, I, I'm really busy. So now I'm like, all about audible so i can listen to books yeah. now now there's not there's really no excuse no so reading, <laughs> reading and being patient and 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 writing down your goals and and doing them every day every day do one thing that's going to push you forward to your goal i i i totally agree with you um reading is so essential it, it just is and you know we we have to train ourselves because you know there's in our culture uh for the most part um reading is not um for most of us i i don't want to generalize but for us latinos it, it, it's not push it wasn't taught to us yeah it doesn't come naturally um <laughs> It, it, we have to be intentional about it. <laughs> I love reading now. Um, um, I, I've been reading like on, I love reading on leadership and just, you know, bettering yourself because it, it definitely works. You know, it, it really does. Um, and obviously you have to put it into action, but reading is it's it's amazing it, it it like inspires you right to get so, out there gives you that oomph and it, it's a gold mine and the other thing i was going to say is uh getting around the right people it's yeah like, you're the average of the five people you're you surround yourself with and yes, um, yeah. even though i didn't read when i was a kid because i lived in a crazy place where really what you saw was drugs and gangs and right. all that um and my my parents didn't read and uh, you know my sisters mm -hmm. didn't either so i i lo i learned to read you know how i learned to read to get into the, it when i got my first job when i was 16 i used to work at the hartford public library i worked there for four years through high school mm -hmm. and the my boss was such an to this day she was my inspiration she she had her house she had I didn't know what a bank account was. She took me to open a bank account. She read so much. And because we were in the library, I, she gave me my first book. She was like, oh, wow. read this. And I was like, oh, it was like this thick. And I'm like, oh, is there pictures? No pictures, you know? And um, she was just, just read it. And, and just being around her and then her people and her friends, which were way older than me, Right. I, I started to look at life different. I'm like, oh, wow, like I, 
you know, this, this, this is a different world from what, and again, it's just getting around, uh, getting away from the kids that were doing bad things and smoking and all these things and being around these great, accomplished great influence. Yeah. Right. And even no, it makes a difference. Yeah. Even today, just try, it's harder now because of COVID I've been kind of cooped up and I miss mm -hmm. getting out there. So to be honest, I haven't had a lot of exposure to anybody. But um, so that part I missed, but that's so important to, to get rid of the toxic people and replace with people that are of good, you know, yeah. that's going to push you that are at a, at a level higher than you. Definitely. No, it's a must. Oh my God. This has been so great. I, we can go on and on. Um, <laughs> you, you are just such a gem. So inspiring. So just so amazing. I, I truly admire you and, and I know the best is yet to come. Um, tell us a little bit about your other um, ventures, business so ventures. I have, a, I have a couple of things that I, I'm working on. I started a website, it's called coachpattyb.com. And the idea behind it is I wanna, I wanna influence those un, un you know, I, I, I hate to call it, but you know, like where I grew up, uh, the people who weren't, I wasn't taught financial literacy. Right. I wasn't taught to save. I wasn't taught to, to put money away for retirement how to invest, how to buy properties or anything like that. So coach Patty B is about just right now. I'm just giving nuggets of information through my social media on mm. how to, you know, save for retirement, how to buy your first home, how to improve your credit, um, how to start a business, you know, how to save for your first emergency fund. Uh, so that is what I'm working on right now. It's all in the starting stages. So what I'm doing right now um, is just pouring as much of me as I can. Um, I am also even mixing in relationships and, and life you know, kind of like I'll do a little video here and there about that. So just to inspire people, be a beacon of light in people's lives. And eventually, monetarily, if this starts bringing, you know, becoming a, another business, that's right. great because what I learned from COVID is that I was relying on one business, which was mm -hmm. my, my cleaning business. And mm -hmm. I didn't have multiple streams of income. Okay. Right. Because honestly, I was putting all my effort and mind into it because it's hard to kind of, there's no such yeah. thing as multitasking, multitasking. Yeah. but um, I, I, you know, this is something, the coach Patty B is something that I can do without getting paid because that's how much passion I have about right. it versus cleaning. I don't like cleaning. Um, <laughs> so this is really something I like that I'm to yeah. When people say they like it, I'm like, good for you. <laughs> I, don't like I don't like cleaning. And so, I like the results of it. The results, the after. Let me walk in. Well, I don't clean anymore, thank God. But yes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's what I'm doing with Coach Patty uh, Patty B. And then I also am part of the Wise Network Group, which is oh. women inspiring, supporting, and encouraging each other. That's what Wise means. And it's mm. a group of women and we all meet once a month through Zoom now. It used to be in person. Right. We do different things. We'll give back to the community. We we have different people come and bring us a little sermon of, of good stuff to make us more powerful in our jobs, in our communities and stuff like that. So That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So great. So tell us where you can be found. Um, give us your, your, your handles as... They would say <laughs> your social media handles. So just to make it easy, if you go to coachpattyb.com, everything's on there. My cleaning business, my other businesses, and uh, my social media accounts are on there. So you can find me through there. Awesome. And you're also on YouTube. I am on YouTube. That's also on coachpattyb.com. Yes. So all the links are in there. Awesome. That's true. That is the place, people. You've heard it. Um, and for your um, cleaning um, um, uh, business, 
Um, you guys are at, um, your guys are in Connecticut, based out of Connecticut. Where, yeah. where, can, where do they go for more information? So uh, we are in Connecticut. So we service the greater Hartford area about 15, 20 miles from like the West Hartford, Connecticut area. And they can go to tagteamcleaning.com um, or call our office, which is 860-680-7261. Perfect. Thank you so much, Patty. You are I very welcome. you and Again, kudos to you. The best is yet to come. It's been a pleasure having you on. Um, this will be the first time, I hope, and not the last. <laughs> of course not. Because <laughs> I know you're going to keep going and, and, you know, just venture out into other things. So we'll love to have you back. Um, so this is it, guys, for our first podcast ever. Um, so I'm your host, Gabriela Santos, um, president of a and Consult Consulting Career Services. You can find us at amcareerconsulting.org. Thank you so much for your attention and have a blessed day. Thanks.